What's up guys? So I'm back to talk to you about this week's Blood Hunt tie-ins. There are six of them that come out this week, Wednesday, June 12th. I got a chance to read all of these over the weekend and I'm just going to try to run through them pretty quick. Just let you know what each one of them is about and then let you know if they are of high, medium, or low importance to the overall main story. And we're going to start with Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 21. I would say that this issue is of medium importance to the main story because half of this is a flashback that shows us how Miles got in the situation that he found himself in at the end of Blood Hunt number two and that we see in Blood Hunt number three. Try not to spoil it just in case you haven't read it, but you probably get the idea of where I'm going. So I was really glad to see that and how it happened because that was kind of it was kind of nagging at me a little bit, like how did he get this way? Well, we do see it in here. And the other half of this book is set at present time where he teams up with Hightail to try to avoid the resurgence of Ramir, who is the vampire that he and Hightail and Blade and Bloodline tangled with a few issues ago. The next tie-in is Amazing Spider-Man Blood Hunt number two, and I'm still gonna rate this one as of medium importance to the main story because they're still talking about a vampire cure and I just feel like maybe possibly that will come in uh, somewhere at the end of the main series. We see Spider-Man, Misty Knight, and the Lizard come up with a plan to save Morbius and Colleen Wing from the people who captured them. A company called Hemoglobin Incorporated. And while they are keeping Colleen Wing locked up, they actually asked Morbius for his help in finding the vampire cure because they said they've been able to take vampires from feral to controlled, but they can't take them from controlled all the way back to humans. So they want Morbius' help to get them to that last step. And I am interested in that part of the story because it seems like there's more to this organization than what they're letting on. And obviously there is because they are kidnapping people to use them in their vampire experiments. Next up is Strange Academy Blood Hunt number two. And I'm still gonna keep this one as of media importance to the main story, although I can see it dropping to low because things changed a little bit in this issue from the last one. The Strange Academy kids and the readers as well learn a little bit more about Pia, who is the new student that we met last issue, and it changes their plans for the Darkhold. The kids also have a run-in with the Darkhold, and they and we learn a little bit more about it slash him as well. Although there is a character that appears at the end that I think may play a larger part in the main story because that character was teased in Blood Hunt number three, so we'll have to see you know, how big of a role they end up playing in all of this. Next up is X-Men Blood Hunt Jubilee number one. Now this is a one shot that just sees Jubilee traveling around trying to help anyone that she comes across that's being attacked by vampires. She meets a woman named Sonal who is being attacked by vampires and saves her, but not before Sonal is turned into a vampire herself. It's not long before they are attacked by another big horde of vampires, but fortunately a group of good vampires known as the Forgiven, led by a character named Ghostblade, shows up to help them. I would definitely rate this one as of low importance to the main story because it's just a one shot. It doesn't feed into the main story. It's pretty localized to just what goes on in this one issue. Next up is Fantastic Four number 21. And I would say this is of low importance to the main story as well. Although this is still really, really good. Reed and Alicia take a trip to New York to go visit a museum. But while they're there, the skies go dark and the museum is attacked by vampires. Reed comes up with a plan to protect everyone there at the museum, but he realizes that it's only a short term plan and that he needs a more permanent solution. This is just a really good action-packed issue and there's some really cool imagery of Reed stretching himself to and beyond his limits. And the last one is still my favorite. It's Avengers number 15 and this one is of low importance to the main story but it's still really really good. It is extremely action-packed and the art is so good and the whole issue is just Captain America and his team of makeshift Avengers fighting Baron Blood and his big group of Nazi vampires aboard a helicarrier. And that's it. That's the entire issue is them just fighting all these Nazi vampires. But it's just really good and really fun. And that's it for this week's six Blood Hut tie-ins. I hope this helps you decide which ones you want to read and maybe which ones you feel like you don't need to. But again, these all come out on Wednesday, June 12th. Let me know if you pick any of these up. And if you do, let me know what you think about them.